This is your chance. Um, survival is to a bar and then what happened? It's not my joke, I don't know. It's not my favorite joke. What happened? Uh, pardon? You, you, you know what? Mr. Rappers goes into a bar, the, the waitress says, is that a gun or are you just happy to see me and you shot her? Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> the darkness continues. <laughs> it's a good start for the truth there. <laughs> Because I do, you know, I learn a lot from it, and you know, I, I get to publish people who, had they been alive 100 years ago, would be my, you know, kind of idols now. So it's like, right. like yeah, I get to publish Robert Fernandez. It's like, you know, it's, it's awesome. So um, yeah, I guess the community and, and uh, also, um, it's. I think it is. It's just nice to be able to put uh, something. In, back into a community that's given, you know, given me so much. So, yeah, it's not just. Yeah, I, I really have nothing to add to that. I think um, that pretty much sums it up. Especially sort of getting people's work out there, who we were excited about. It's a big part of Costa Nostra. So. Okay, I'm a high school uh, creative writing teacher, actually, and I know this is a cliche question, but. What inspires each of you, and how can I, as a teacher of very young poets, um, inspire them? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, that's. I taught some kids uh, in Singapore this, uh, not this past summer, the summer before, and I, I was like blown away by how. Um, how, how much it seemed like how much less they it seemed to me that they needed to be inspired I mean, you know it's like I can sit there and like and for them it's just you know just say a poem you know like put it here and they just make something um, but I feel like it applies it, it, it applies for me 
But the, the question of, of conversation um, is, has been really important for me and like thinking about writing as a conversation and a way of communicating and whether, you know, whether you're communicating with the history of like tr the tradition of poetry or whether it's a way um, to communicate with friends or, you know, whatever. Uh, I think, yeah, just... Like we all want to communicate, right? Like look at Facebook, right? It's it's uh, it's. Um, I think it really it just emphasizing that aspect of writing is really inspiring for for me. So. Um, thanks for that question. Uh, for me, there's this um, bizarre sort of balance between um, when I'm work, work, working with students. Um, <laughs> impressing upon them that uh, this is difficult and frustrating, and then the next minute, uh, and who cares, it's fun, we're having everyone, you know. And so there's this weird sort of bounce where we're going from one side to the other, so they're, they're sometimes getting this sense of absolute freedom, I can say, and then the, the next minute I realize, but, but it's still hard to do that, isn't it? Um, and it's sort of going back and forth between those extremes. <laughs> Uh, I, you know, I think that um, the I think teaching poetry should have an element of um, well, the instructor may or may not have style, but uh, the work that you look at should be enticing in some way and should, you know, um, convey a vision uh, that they can kind of latch on to. It seems to me. Uh, as I understand it, poetry would be developed before people could write, and they would. Put things in verse, rhyming sometimes, other times not, but some cadence. And if you saw a movie that barely does it a hundred years ago, they used that for the for the directive. And and then we, we just play with it now. Well, you were just thinking about Australia. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Australia. Funny story. Um, yeah, no, it's, you know, I, is any, who in here has read Bruce Chatwin's Song Lines? Anybody? Nobody? <laughs> oh, it's an amazing book. So, um, without giving my sort of junior high book report, it's a, it's a book about the Aboriginal song lines and sort of, it's also a book about his yearning uh, his yearning to travel and he's always in motion and why do we have this yearning and um, anyways it's not necessarily a perfect scholarship nor a perfect book but um, it's it's basically about how language carries with it are the movements uh, of, of people and you know of um, yeah of groups of people and how Within, like all language began as song is sort of the point where he begins and thus all, all language began as poetry. Um, yes, yeah, this is a fascinating book, which, uh, yeah, I think it's, it's interesting when, whenever one sits down and writes a poem to think like that you're trying to get back to a part of language um, that is, is there in everything, but that perhaps in a poem you're just focusing on that aspect of the, you know, mythical aspect of language or something. Yeah, I think as, as um, the, the, the bizarre thing about poetry, right, is that it, <laughs> it's entirely language and yet in a way depends on parts of language that aren't the parts that we used to communicate, right? Like a rhyme doesn't mean something, right? Or a rhythm doesn't mean something. You can't look it up in a dictionary, right? So this, I think this is what, what uh, um, we're all sort of thinking of here is this uh, some part of language that you know, anything you say has some rhythm, right? Um, if you're speaking in Italian, everything rhymes, right? Uh, but using those aspects of, of, of language that uh, that don't mean anything and make them mean something, because we always run into this problem, right? Where if, if I only speak in a way that can be understood, to sort of denotatively or whatever, I look up every, every look up every word in a dictionary. It turns out there are a lot of things I can't say like that, right? So we've tried to force it to do these other things that we've been doing, I'm sure, 
uh, as soon as we could grunt, right? Um, uh, and th those things are still important to us as poets, right? And in, in many cases, or at least some cases, more so than the denotative meaning or something like that. Nice. Good, good note. Any other questions for that? Not a very serious question, but. <laughs> <laughs> so, am I correct that Joshua, you drove all the way from California? Oh no no, we drove from uh, we drove from Iowa Iowa City. That's okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but my heart's in California. Do you have a full trajectory? Oh, we, I came from uh, Berlin like so, last week. Forget Berkeley. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's the, uh, I, and then to New York right before the hurricane hit, and then Minneapolis, and then Iowa City. And I was in Des Moines last night working up with a friend on a job all night long, which is why I look like this. And then <laughs> back to Iowa City, and then we came here. Um, yeah, so. So yeah, that's why the Bruce Chaplin book seems to resonate with me right now. <laughs> Any other questions? Thank you so much to all of you guys for coming out today. A huge thank you to our three performers. Buy a bunch of books. Give them a big round of applause.